second tissue type that we want to look at today is connective tissue. And connective tissues are the most abundant tissues in the body. And because of that, they're very varied. There's a lot of different forms of connective tissue. So first, let's think of function. The function of connective tissue, as the name implies, is connect. You can also think of them binding, so maybe connecting bone to bone or binding muscle to bone. They support, so they're supporting organs, they're supporting the framework that keeps you upright. And they are protecting. Connective tissues can protect a um, variety of organs in the body. So one of the themes of connective tissues, even though they're very diverse, one of the themes of connective tissues is they have a non-living matrix. And that matrix is composed of typically fibers, so collagen fibers, which are quite um, strong, and elastin fibers, sometimes called elastic fibers, which are very flexible. So collagen and elastin are two of the most common matrix components. The matrix could also be fluid. So one of the connective tissues that we'll talk about is blood, and it has a fluid connective or fluid matrix. The other component of connective tissues, the other theme, is they have living cells embedded in that matrix. And so each different type of connective tissue has its own modifications to do what it does best. So the way that your book presents it and the way that the poster presents it are a little bit different and the way that your lab manual presents it. So I'm going to try to, to give you an overview of the way that I like to, to characterize uh, connective tissues. So I'd like to begin with maybe what I think of as the most simple connective tissue, adipose tissue. And you can see it here in the top of the uh, diagram on the poster. It's also in your manual. If you leave through, you'll, um, you'll and actually they describe it, they don't show a picture of adipose, but I'll make sure that you have a picture on the website. The adipose tissues are modified to store fat and so they're very very obvious because they have a very um, kind of open looking cell. It's not that it's open, it's actually storing sugars and other um, fats and adipose tissue is going to surround um, your organs and give you some cushioning and protection in case you fall. So um, we also have places in the body where we might collect adipose tissue. You think of cellulite, you think of adipose tissue. So connective tissue like adipose tissue is one of the um, is one of the examples. Adipose tissue is one of the examples of connective. Another type uh, that we can just collectively call fibrous can come in several forms. And in the fibrous connective tissues, the fibers are a little bit more obvious. So loose fibrous, and then what we think of as dense fibrous. These are two examples of fibrous connective tissues. And as the name implies, loose fibrous, the arrangement of the fibers is not quite as rigid, and dense fibers that are being packed together more tightly. And again, based on that um, arrangement, they're going to have slightly different functions. For example, the loose um, fibrous tissue is going to be around organs, underneath the skin, it's going to be in the mucous membranes, around the blood vessels, so a lot of different places in the body for loose fibrous. You can actually see some of the cells embedded in that. When I send you to the website, you'll see some examples of cells. Um, those cells might have different functions in secreting things. And um, again, depending on where the connective tissue is located, uh, they're slightly modified to do a different function. The dense fibrous would be found in places where you really need to kind of bind and support. So it mentions the dermis, which is part of the integumentary system, the dermis. Um, the dermis is just deep to the epidermis of your skin. You'll be getting to that soon in the textbook at the end of chapter four. The submucosa of the digestive system, the submucosa is a layer just inside the lining. So there's an epithelial layer first, then this dense fibrous connective tissue to help bind. So again, several places in the body. The next kind of pair of terms when we think of connective tissue are cartilage and bone. And these two very distinctive appearances Cartilage, you're probably familiar with several types of cartilage. You have cartilage in your nose, in your ears, surrounding your joints, various uh, places surrounding the skeleton. And the three basic types of cartilage are hyalin cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage. And as the name implies, they're each slightly modified for a different function. The hyalin cartilage, this is found in the cartilage of the ribs, the cartilage that connects the ribs to the sternum. It's found in the nose, the trachea, the ends of long bones, and hyaline cartilage is also the model for the fetal skeleton during embryonic development, fetal development. Instead of having hard bones, the um, fetus would have a hyaline cartilage model, and that gets replaced with bone then during the uh, process of development. A 
elastic cartilage, as the name implies, elastic, very flexible. This is going to be found in the epiglottis, which is a little flap to help prevent food from getting into your trachea. It's also found in your ear. So I suggest you wiggle your nose with your fingers, feel the rigidity of the hyaline cartilage you'd find, wiggle your ear a little bit, and you feel like it's a little bit more flexible. Um, so the elastic cartilage, in these images they've been stained, and I don't want you to think that that's part of the, the uh, way that you recognize them. It's more to do with the arrangement of the fibers. And then fibrocartilage has a lot of fibers, so many fibers that it's difficult to see the cells. And these would be found in places like the intervertebral discs, the little cartilage discs between your vertebrae, the knee joints, the pubic symphysis, which is where the two hip bones meet at the front of the body. And so those are the three types of cartilage. I will say that the cells of cartilage, regardless of which kind, the cells are called chondrocytes. So when you're reading, we'll talk about it now, then we'll talk about it again when we get to the skeleton. Chondrocytes are associated with cartilage. They're also found in these little chambers called lacunae. So you might notice that term when you read through chapter four about the tissues. I also mentioned bone. Bone is gonna be a little more rigid than cartilage. There are also different types of bone. Um, the picture that you're seeing here, it almost looks like a cross section of a tree. You see rings. This is what we call compact bone. And we're gonna talk more about the details of bone when we get to the skeleton. But again, just to mention a difference in the connective tissue cells, the cells of bone are called osteocytes. So chondrocytes with cartilage, osteocytes with bone. They also have lacunae, but they're not nearly as obvious. And reinforced matrix with lots of salts, calcium salts, you, you know, you have to drink your milk for strong bones, and this is the reason why. So we've mentioned adipose, the fibrous connective tissues, cartilage, bone, the last two I want to mention actually aren't pictured, well, one's pictured here, the blood is pictured here, the blood and the lymph. These are our two fluid connective tissues. And so both blood and lymph, the primary matrix is water. And there's also going to be proteins and carbohydrates and things dissolved in that water. The difference would be that blood would contain blood cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Lymph is only going to have white blood cells, it's not going to have red blood cells and platelets. So again, when we get to the chapter about the cardiovascular system, we'll get into details. The primary cell you would see in blood would be the red blood cell, it's the most numerous. Uh, but the theme for connective tissues, living cells in the non-living matrix. So familiarize yourself with those and I will send you a website so you can view some of those online.